Welcome to the Land Cave, where we're living as nerds, talking about video games, movies, all kinds of dorky stuff. I'm here, uh, Patrick, by the way, joined by Owen. Hi. Yeah, and we're here, like I said, talking about cool stuff. And if you want to talk about cool stuff, you can hang out with us every Thursday night at 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern, however you want to, whatever part of the world you're in. Um, we're live on Facebook every single week. You can check it out outside of the podcast. We love our podcast listeners. And uh, also on YouTube. Happy about YouTube as well. It's a nice archive. I, that's what I think about it. Yeah. Well, I just like it that uh, no matter where you want to see or listen to our beautiful voices and faces, it's there. Whatever, yeah. whatever you like. You want to watch us on YouTube, you do it. You want to go back on Facebook and click around in there and add some comments uh, to the, the VOD, you can. You want to listen yeah. to us on podcasts, you absolutely can. Yeah, just leave comments wherever you are because we got a lot of people who don't comment, especially our podcast listeners. So, yeah, jump on our Facebook if you listen to our podcast. Uh, message us or uh, or just chat with us on Facebook and uh, one of the uh, the main posts or whatever posts. Like, because yeah, you can follow us there. We don't we don't get interaction. Uh, podcasts are really like a one way medium, and we're all about you know it's twenty twenty. We got to have this two way street here. And um, if you were like following like this week, I also share. You know, and Patrick does a little bit too, but mm -hmm. I try and share stuff at least every couple days and there's some spicy spicy things like a little bit of ff7 intro mm -hmm, mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm, wanted to mm -hmm. see that gorgeous video yeah i was i was really happy about that i had to i don't like you you messaged me and we're like in before it's taken down so i immediately downloaded it um it's it's gorgeous it's be, it's exactly what i want i love the detail in her in her jacket here so yeah. cool so cool and i don't know if you heard like the soundtrack mixing in that they do a little bit um mm -hmm. to to mess around i'm not going to spoil it but like if if you know the game you know the tunes that they're mixing mm -hmm. in with with her theme uh there's uh a lot going on i think yeah. they really captured the magic of the intro to final fantasy 7 and brought it into like a 2020 yeah, yeah we're in 2020 it's, happy it's, new year by the way. <laughs> happy new year yeah dude i'm i'm ecstatic this is uh, and we'll we'll talk about this later on in the in the podcast later on the show if you're listening uh second part uh if you're watching uh but this was this is a great way to start the new year i i love it and she like i'm i can't get over how great these characters look in keeping to the to the view and the the uh and honoring the their kind of original artwork and there it is. It's this shot, is just, dude. yeah, <laughs> because that's the scope they were trying to, I mean, in, you know, first you know, original PlayStation graphics, they were trying to show you this scope and wow, you can see the different sectors there. That looks amazing. And imagine if with the depth of this game, mm -hmm. they let you go more places since they're trying to make this a self-contained game mm -hmm. that imagine like how much of that you actually get to visit. Man, wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if you could go to other sectors? Like, not that it has to be open world. I have a world, feeling but... that we're going to be able to. By the way, watch out for spoilers and stuff. People have been data mining the crap out of it. I think somebody theor uh, theoretically got a hold of the whole game mm. and has started, not played it, I don't think, but they've started uh, letting some stuff out. So if you want to be more surprised, like this this intro that we saw, that that's pretty much all I need until yeah. March. But... I don't know if I'll be able to resist too many things, but if there's anything where it's like, oh, did you, can you believe that this person's in the game? Watch out for those articles. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they're going to, as just like what happened with Star Wars uh, and anything like yeah. that, as you get closer, the leaks start happening, and a lot of these leaks are legit. Um, so, yeah, just stay away from them. Just stay off the internet for the rest of your life is what I'm really getting at here. Um, you have to listen to our show. Yeah, of course. You can, you can do that. Com slash the land yeah, yeah. I've been playing more Metal Gear, by the way. I've been stuck on this. Um, knowing, like, knowing what happens, like, knowing the plot and then playing it again. Um, yeah, it's kind of like watching The Usual Suspects a second time where you start catching things. Um, and uh, you don't care if I spoil Metal Gear, right? Don't care. Yeah, so, and this game has been out for five years now. So I didn't realize that until, until uh, earlier this week. Um, this game, you're pl you're supposedly playing as Big Boss, but uh, it in actuality you're playing as like another soldier who got brainwashed and plastic surgery to look like Big Boss. So you're Tom Cruise. 
So you're Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you got plastic surgery. You think that you're big boss, but there's, there's parts of the game where he's like, he's talking to people who are, who are his, uh, you know, in, in his other missions and people like uh, revolver ocelot and some other people that he's worked with. And he'll say things like, tell me how to do this. Like in the old days. And you're like, Oh, cause he's, you know, he's been in a coma. So he's rusty. Nope. It's cause he has no idea. Um, and it's it's pretty freaking awesome. Uh, the action in this game is amazing too for for Metal Gear. Uh, you've been playing more Control. I beat Control. You beat Control. I did. Nice. Um, very, very good game. I see why it got um, a lot of the praise that it did. Mm -hmm. It won AGNs. Uh, AGNs. It won yeah. IGNs. Yeah. Uh, uh, game of the year. It was nominated for the the Game Awards Game of the Year looks beautiful in, in a way these are times where i wish that i played on pc um mm -hmm. because it had i know that it had ray tracing on pc the game mm -hmm. just looks gorgeous and i was playing it probably on one of the worst experiences in the ps4 pro which is saying something because i know it was on xbox one x and it looked mm -hmm. great there too um the story's a little trippy for me i had a hard time kind of wrapping my head around it i got the basics but you kind of um, I won't spoil this one because this one came out this year. Sure, of but course. But you, you, you play a person who's looking for her brother at the Federal Bureau of Control, which is mm -hmm. kind of this, like, x file type place where weird stuff happens. There's, like, objects in the world that, like, do weird things, and they house those objects here. And then, uh, as you can see from the video, you start to get, like, some powers and stuff, too, because reasons like that i could sure. never establish what made her special to get them oh, but they do explain it i just didn't get it <laughs> uh, but really fun i put it's like a 10 hour game um yeah i i liked it a lot i i i really wanted to finish it before the end of the year just because there's so much stuff coming soon uh i think even like dragon ball z if it mm -hmm. gets good reviews i might pick that up and that's out in like two weeks so that one's tempting. um yeah uh and that's why I'm just doing a little palate cleansing with some Battlefront 2 right now. <laughs> yeah, now Battlefront 2 is it it became a decent game. It's not amazing, but it became a decent game after all the updates and the rollbacks and everything. Um, I even say it's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say it's good. It's, it's solid. fun. Yeah, it's fun. I love uh I mean we got this and people will compare about this Battlefront 2 to the OG Battlefront 2. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm like, okay, I, I agree with some of their complaints, but man, some of the scope in some of the levels and uh, not only the scope, but like the, the amount of uh, like, a, what is it? The, not the AT-ATs. Well, there are AT-ATs in there, right? Uh, yeah. So I was thinking, yeah, at ATSTs getting those, like when you get enough points to drop in as a, with an ATST or to, mm -hmm. uh, to use a bomber, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and so the the biggest complaint was the loot boxes. They completely yeah. fixed that. Um, on PSN, you it still has the option to like buy crystals and stuff, but they now every single thing is purchasable by points, and it's a reasonable amount of points. So you can buy each individual skin with the credits that you earn um, yeah. from playing the game. Uh, I what I did is I went onto CD Keys and hmm. I bought a cheap year of EA Access. Okay. Um, so for like twenty bucks. Uh, there was a sale over Christmas, so I got twenty dollars of EA access for a year, and that includes Battlefront and then like a bunch of their sports games hmm. and and uh, uh, a couple other EA games. But I don't know if I'll ever check those out. I was literally just like I had missed the boat on some of the cheap mm -hmm. deals on Battlefront too, so I was like I'll just do EA access for a year, and maybe they'll add to it as uh, as time goes on. But it's good stuff. Yeah, you can always drop in on one of the sports games uh, yeah. if, if you if you have an itch to do that. Yeah. Um, every now and then, Once I have an while, itch. You're like, I want to yeah. throw a football. Yeah, yeah. Every now and then, I have that, and then I just want to play NFL Blitz because yeah. on N64 was so cool. I don't know. If, I don't know how they haven't redone that. Or like, like I know EA has the license, mm -hmm. but why don't you just make a mode? Like eh, FIFA literally is doing that this this year, or oh, really? either either this year or with the most recent FIFA that came out, they added a like. It's not exactly FIFA Street. Mm -hmm. um, there was never a FIFA Blitz, but there's like it's like a three-on-three three mode, I think, and it's supposed to be kind of like FIFA Street. Gotcha. Um, and I think the NBA 2K even did a mode like that. So NFL should just do an NFL Blitz. And yeah. A lot. You like just have a mode where you just blow them up and make them big and whatever. It's fun stuff. It's fun stuff. And and like just 
make it like literally like a creator wrestler so that way you're not like oh you're injuring a real person it's like no 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 just random people so no one like gets worried and you don't feel like people are targeting people come on it'd be fun um playing nfl blitz you're absolutely targeting people. <laughs> well of course you are but i what i mean is like you'd have videos that people would put online of like look at how i, I sacked tom brady 50 times or whatever it is like i do that power bombs and stuff i'm sure you would <laughs> i would absolutely do that <laughs> So this is this is the beginning of 2020, and we wanted to reflect on 2019 Ooh. in doing that. Um, we've been we've been doing the show together for a year, so happy anniversary to us! Uh, a little over a year, right? A little over. A year. Uh, I think like October and November. Yeah, so we'll call, well, a little over a year. We missed our anniversary, yeah. so yeah, I'll send I'll, I'll send you a cake or something. Uh, <laughs> so we want like to marble. Talk- like marble, marble, marble yep. cakes are good. Marble cakes are good. Underrated. Yeah, I like carrot cake. I know I'm a weird person. Also though. underrated. Yes, I, lo- I love carrot cake. Like, with, I mean, I know people like there's a whole raisins or thing. Like, I don't even care. I don't even care. That cream cheese icing carrot cake stuff is go- so good. Um, there's actually a comedian that makes a joke about that where he's like, that cream, that like frosting even makes carrot cake taste delicious. He's like, what do you mean it has cream cheese frosting? <laughs> All right, cut me a piece. Cut me a piece. It's true. It's true. Like if you buy the uh, like that pill, like the Pillsbury like cinnamon rolls. I don't know if you ever buy those, but like they have, yeah, they now have those with like the cinnamon like cream cheese icing. There we go. Just, just go right there for that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna to go if you're gonna go home. You need to go big. Exactly. Exactly. And nothing's bigger than a cinnamon. Anyways, right. um, we're ending 2019 onto 2020, but we want to reflect on the year that was 2019 and uh, talk about the games that we played um i've 44. yeah 44 games dude you yeah you definitely took the cake here i'm gonna keep track i haven't been doing that before we were talking about an app um uh just as the show was beginning by the way yeah. what was that what's the app name again it's called gg <laughs> yeah uh, and like it has a weird website thing but if you search gg and i feel like the website's like gg iao but mm-hmm. i've been i i've literally talked about this on the show and like offline before i wanted a, a good reads for video games and this dude this singular person uh this last i don't know how long he's been doing it i feel like mm-hmm. it's just this last year has made one and mm-hmm. so i'm going to support this guy and do it so it's called gg and it allows me to make lists so i've already put in my 2019 list i shared my profile on facebook i'll probably do it again a few more times as as my lists are going on and I'm gonna probably start using their website for to to post little reviews of games. That's and awesome. Share those out to that way, just uh you know do some writing. And uh, we haven't got like a website going yet, so I'll probably do something like that. Um, yeah. But I do suggest if you guys want to track your stuff, like Goodreads or video games is exactly what it is. So. Heck yeah. Uh, John's John has our URL by the way. I think I told you about that. John yeah, bought yeah. our domain, so he's like he's like not holding it hostage for us, but he's ready to uh, help us out on that. Anyways. Uh, I want to start off. I, I figured we would do uh, do like my list, then your list. Um, we could trade off. I don't know how you, you want to trade off, or you just want to do one one for one. What do you want to do? Um, no, we can. We'll just go down each person's list. I think that way you can say what say your piece about it. Okay. Okay. And you know you can interject as you go as, as well. Oh, um, starting off, we want to talk about some honorable mentions, some shout outs, if you will, as the kids say. Shout outs. Yeah. So starting off with uh, Legend of Zelda um, because I really liked this game. I didn't. I didn't dislike it. I liked it, but I don't think. Um, you know, maybe part of it was the price point. I don't think that this was game of the year contender for me, even though I loved it, even though it was great. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give it a shout out. Uh, also, shout out to Mario Maker. It's good. I love it. It's great, even. But at the same time, it's it's what we already had uh, before with some little improvements. So I didn't think it it really got. It, it really should have game of the year potential in my opinion it needs to be okay. it needs to be something sh- you know kind of earth shaking if you will uh last okay. one code vein because oh. it was it was a valiant effort and it's not a it's not bad it's not going to take the souls crown if you will but a valiant effort on a souls game a very different um setting than uh than a lot of the other games that are trying to copy dark souls uh took so i was happy about that i think when you can't have a souls game every year that it's okay for other people to try like maybe oh, yeah. they, maybe they're not gonna be completely successful but like if you need if you got that soul's itch and you want to mm-hmm, scratch mm-hmm, it a little mm-hmm. bit yeah yeah so there's there's like i think seven or eight souls like games coming out in the next year yeah. um 
Neo so two's coming out. Right? People, so we'll talk Neo about two, that later. Neo two's coming out. Yes, we'll talk about that. Um, so that's that's it for my uh, honorable mentions. The the game as you you put po- you put on one that said your game that did not come out this year that you wanted to give a shout out to. Yeah. So I'm kind of doing the same thing. I've been playing the heck out of Magic the Gathering. Uh, yeah. I I even signed up for the uh, for the beta for uh, the Magic the Gathering MMO, Magic the Gathering Legacy. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm 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 just loving the game. Uh, I'm I'm really curious about that MMO just from a standpoint of like Magic's trying to branch out. Some of yeah. the League of Legends is trying to branch out. Uh, I really want to know because Matt. For those who don't know, anybody who's played Magic, they have a ton of lore they like every mm-hmm. single set of cards they come out with they always come out with books that mm-hmm. go along with it i back in the day i yeah. uh, i remember reading through the ravnica books um there's a lot of crazy magic lore that yeah. they can like draw from yeah i think and i think you think you're right people forget about the lore they just think about the cards um yeah. and cards cards. there's a lot of and the question is can that lore stand up in the whole mmo i think it could it just depends on the way that the way that they run it so it's gotta be fun yeah, it's got to be fun. Um, so starting off with my first game, and um, by the way, none of these were game of the year. It's just okay. my, uh, my. T- apparently I picked four. I thought I picked five. But here's my four for the year. Uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Ooh. which if you listeners... I'm surprised and, and, by this pick, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, because uh, those of you who've been watching or listening to the show know that I rage quitted this game. <laughs> um, That's why I'm surprised. I have, I have gone back since... And I enjoy it. Uh, I think a lot of my emotion was in the moment. Um, as the uh, for those of you who who need some catch up, I was playing against a boss. I was having trouble with. I looked up a way to uh, try to cheese the boss, and even then it was difficult. And then they patched the cheese. They literally patched patched it so you could no longer beat her in the easier way. It wasn't an instant kill. It was still going to take you twelve to fifteen minutes to kill this kill this woman. But even then, and if you messed up at any point, you would die. Uh, but they were like, yeah, we're patching that out. So I think part of it was my motion. The game is really, really well done. I'm, like I said, uh, it may have been, uh, it may have been one that I rage quitted, but at the same time, um, I think it was totally, totally worth the time. Uh, next on the list, by the way, is Resident Evil 2. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. Absolutely love Resident Evil. And this one took Resident Evil into uh, similar. <laughs> it took old school Resident Evil into the modern uh, modern age. Uh, as you guys probably know, Resident Evil Seven or Biohazard came out, and it was amazing. But it's so different. It is so different than any of the other uh, Resident Evil games. That um, yeah, it was nice to see it go back to a re- to a Resident Evil of old, and. Uh, yeah, and kind of getting to see that old old school Resident Evil. Took out the tank controls. You have actually modern controls on this. Uh, really good uh, movability and everything. Uh, well, I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but um, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Um, next up, uh, no surprise to anybody here, but uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which was a remarkable game. Um, they took again. You guys know I love the Souls games. This game is very similar to a to a Dark Souls game, but somehow being approachable for those who were not huge uh, Dark Souls fans. So it was really cool to see that. Uh, to see, Star- we, you know, we always love we love Star Wars and everything, but it was really cool to see them take uh, Souls like and uh, and Tomb Raider or Uncharted kind of navigation. Um, so it was really cool to see that um, that blend. And that being able to blend that in a successful way with Star Wars was amazing. I mean, lightsaber combat's always going to be uh, fantastic, but in this case, like they they mastered um, lightsaber combat. The the navigation and the uh, Jedi powers were amazing, and the story the story was better than I thought it was going to be. Um, not that I thought it was going to be bad, but the story was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, next up. Uh, we got Death Stranding, um, and this game. All right, so Death Stranding. Uh, I have a little bias in here because it's Hideo Kojima, and I'm a huge Kojima fan. Uh, but this game is this game's story was a little convoluted, 
but it was a great journey. Uh, people joke around about this being a walking simulator. It's it's kind of a walking simulator. It's a delivery simulator. I mean, you're you're delivering packages. Um, you're deliver literally delivering packages. That's your that's your thing, um, which is kind of weird uh, for a game to to have that and not be a joke uh, or just a straight up uh, indie game. But the the world that was built in this the 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 interesting in my opinion, slightly convoluted story uh, was was great. It was a, it was a journey. It was a journey and a, an experience uh, in a way that I didn't I didn't fully accept it uh, expect it to be that. Um, yeah, I didn't expect it to be that odd, but it's Hideo Kojima, so of course it's gonna be, it's gonna be weird. Uh, so that's that was my those are my picks uh, for for 2019. Um, Owen stepped away for just a moment, so I'll just ramble uh, for for a bit here. I hope you guys are having a great 2020. By the way, um, I'm not gonna spoil Star Wars, but I, I liked some Star like me some Star Wars there. Uh, the ending of Mandalorian was great. We will be talking about that and reviewing both of them uh, soon. By the way, we won't do that live as we don't want to spoil it for anybody. Um, shout out to uh, David and Frank uh, who are hanging out watching with us. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope you guys are having a good 2022. Frank, I hope you're uh, hope you're feeling better. By the way, I saw you're you're back uh, back at work, so I'm happy I'm happy about that. I know you you probably uh, would have stayed away as long as you could, but or you did. Uh, but I'm glad I'm glad you're back at it and miss you, buddy. Um, but anyways, yeah. So we're, we're going to talk about Star Wars um, and other uh, later videos. Uh, and kind of gearing up to uh, to 2020, um, yeah, dude. You, yeah, David, you got to play uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Um, it's the st the story is good, but the the gameplay is great. Uh, if you've if you're not a fan of the uh, like the Dark Souls games, then like just um, dial that difficulty down to story mode. Um, I know that some people kind of get. Uh, I don't know. Some people kind of get um, bothered by that, but yeah, I would dial it down to uh, to story mode because the uh, if you go to like Jedi Knight or Jedi Master, it gets really difficult. Um, I wish there was something kind of in between. Uh, I think there's four settings. I think there need to be one in between the story one, but that's just me. Um, Owen's going to be a minute, so I'm going to jump over to my list of most anticipated games of 2020. Uh, here we are at. Well, one we already talked about, which is uh, which is the Final Fantasy VII uh, remake. Let me get another video up so we can watch another one. Um, this Final Fantasy VII is probably my favorite Final Fantasy game. Um, I've played I've played most of them. I've not played all of them. I'm not going to lie here, lie and say that I've played I think two thirds of the Final Fantasy games. Most of the ones that I missed were uh, were the early ones. Um, I have played uh, quite a few, and I absolutely love it um but seven was one of my favorites part of it is it was my first but part of it was the the story the way that they wove all the all these characters together um and even though you're playing as a main character they had so much life in these characters and so much uniqueness about each one that you know i'd have full conversations with with people about you know uh, about which companions like or which which party like lineup that I would roll with, and like I kept certain people with me specifically because of their personality or or some somewhat about their um, uh, their skill sets. But sometimes I would bring people around just to bring them around. I had Eris in my party all the time because you know it wasn't it wasn't the right thing if you will. It wasn't who she was supposed to end up with. But uh, yeah, I wanted her to end up with uh, with Cloud. And yeah, like I said, that's uh, <laughs> that's not who she was supposed to end up with. But at the same time, that's who I wanted her to end up with uh, because I had you know a little school schoolboy crush on her. So that's what happens there. Um, next up on my list of uh, t most anticipated for 2020 is uh, The Last of Us Two, which is on I think everyone's list. The Last of Us was one of the most amazing stories I've seen in a game, hands down. Um, the Last of Us 2 looks like it's bringing it again. I mean, The Last of Us had some great gameplay, but the story is what kept, kept people uh, coming. Even if the, the game got extremely difficult, I mean, you got some stealth elements that some people would rage quit. Some people who didn't like Metal Gear or uh, what's the, the game, Tenshu and those kind of games, they didn't like that, but they were completely fine with stealth when it came to The Last of Us because that story 
drug you in. That story hooked you and you wanted to see it through. You wanted to see, uh, you wanted to see Ellie uh, and Joel push through and survive. And now we're seeing her more, <laughs> do even more than survive uh, in here. So spoilers for the first game that she lives. <laughs> Next up on my most anticipated is uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I forgot how long it's been since this game was announced. Wow. So we've been waiting for what, like a year and a half uh, since Ghost of Tsushima was, was announced. It is... It, well, you have all these different games coming out. We've been talking about Neo. We've been talking about all these other games that are of heavy Japanese influence. This game, we finally now have a game that's going to be, from what we've heard, is going to be like straight up samurai, uh, more historically accurate. It may not be 100% historically accurate, but more historically accurate. Or maybe if it's not historically accurate, maybe it's it's uh, more uh, uh, tied to their mythos and how they view uh, their their history and their people uh, as opposed to uh, the Western version, the Americanized version of what it is to be a samurai or a ninja. So I totally appreciate this. This Looking at this reminds me, uh, when, I've, when I've watched the this and some of the other clips, reminds me of like a Kurosawa film and like an old school uh, Western, because I know this, this part doesn't really um, do that part justice, but some of the dueling that they've shown in here when you have uh, uh, two of them meet up just reminds me of that. Some of the situations really remind me of that, and I can't wait to play this. Um, on a similar but very different note, Neo 2. Um, Neo was a great game. Again, a Souls-like game, but they took it and said, let's go... Uh, hard into Japanese mythology of uh, of like ghosts and demons and and it's it's weird and beautiful and I love it. It was extremely difficult, but it was totally worth it. If you like uh, if you like games like that, if you like Dark Souls games, you haven't played this, um, you've got to check it out. It's one of like I said, it was one of my favorite games that came out recently, especially out of Souls games. Um, also, random thought in there, random edition but dreams um I, and only because i want to see what where the heck this goes uh dreams and the idea of make, being able to make your own game um and at first i was really not into this owens actually kind of turned me on a little bit more in regards to the um in regards to the idea while it's while the game comes out and people make games on it, I'm going to view this more like Mario Maker, and I'm totally stealing that from uh, from Owen. But I uh, played. This reminds me a lot of Little Big Planet and a few other games I played, where I would spend hours. I would spend like I spent 20 or 30 hours one week trying to make a mech in Little Big Planet, and you know what? I did it, and it was awesome. Um, and then I realized, crap! I just spent 20 or 30 hours in a game trying to make a mech uh, out of like these, you know, what the assets that they gave me. Um, so seeing this and seeing the growth that this could, uh, could bring and seeing people be able to make games that they previously couldn't, we're going to get some really interesting things out of this people uh, pe out of people who can't code and they just want to go all in the creativity. Um, I hope that, people throw out some templates like they create things and then they start create uh, handing out templates of um of maybe of levels or or game games that then you can uh can expand on i think that'd be really cool uh so then people can kind of get a jump start or try some stuff out obviously um it's going to vary depending on the the person who's making it and the artistry involved but i think it's gonna be cool and it comes up my birthday so i gotta play it uh, next up, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Okay, so there's a really short period of my time, of my, uh, of my uh, freshman year of college where I got really into Vampire the Masquerade. Um, I didn't go straight up goth or anything, but yeah, I was, I got into to vampires and Vampire the Masquerade, Interview with the Vampire and all that. I mean, that movie's amazing in anyways, but um, this series is one that I don't think enough people have gotten into. They only had, I think they had two 
uh, games on PC. That may be why as many, not as many people got into it. Uh, and then you also have tabletop RPGs. You can play a D&D style uh, role-playing game out of it too, where you play as a as a vampire. And each type of vampire has different strengths and weaknesses. So this looks really interesting to, uh, to bring it into modern gaming. Um, and I'm excited about it. Yeah. Uh, the last two, I don't even know if they're going to show up, but I'm going to name them. Uh, I think it's probable, it's probable and possible that we get some Diablo 4. Um, I love Diablo. I absolutely love Diablo. And this is looking darker and grimmer and more like my Diablo, old school Diablo, when Diablo was Diablo before it was um, shiny, shiny colors and uh, well, not really loot boxes, but... I don't know. Just I felt like the life uh, Diablo three did not have the um, the feeling uh, and the aura of a Diablo game, which is why games like Path of Exile and others became so good. Uh, became or not only were so good, but like so many people started playing them because they weren't getting what they wanted out of Blizzard. So other people stepped up and made the game. This looks like it could be. Uh, it could be Diablo again. It could, we could be going back to Diablo, and I really hope that um, with that horse uh, showing up there. I think that I really hope that we're going to have more of an open world uh, than we did in the previous uh, Diablos because Diablo 2 was getting close to it where you had different uh, areas of the world you could go to. I would love for this game to be uh, more open world in being able to maybe this is like the northern continent and uh, maybe there's like the, the deserts to the east, like something like that. Old school RPG, give me a giant open world. Let me let me. Um, uh, fast travel, uh, but also give me a horse. Like, that'd be so cool. Like, give me Skyrim and Diablo, throw them together, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, the other one, uh, by the way, I don't know if this is going to come out, but I really want Breath of the Wild to, uh, to come out uh, next year. I don't know if it's going to. It would be a very Nintendo thing for them to uh, announce it and then just drop D uh, Breath of the Wild too, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, but I still wanted to put it in here just to say, you know, what, if Breath of the Wild two happens next year, this is this is my most anticipated game. If it if it does release, this would be on top. So that's that's my list. So Owen, are you are you back or is everything okay? We good? You you may be muted. I think you're muted. No, you're still. I still can't hear you. Hmm. Hmm. We're gonna check uh, real quick on that. All right, he's gonna he's gonna drop in and drop out. But thank you for bearing with me on my my side of that list. By the way, as it kind of as it was very one sided. Um, I'll give some, some you know some little comments on Owens, but I'll give him the floor here in a bit to go through his list. Um, but yeah, just to recap, um, there were so, there were a lot of good games in 2019, so I couldn't really pick. Um, if I if you had to put a gun to my head, uh, I'd probably say from a gameplay and story perspective, in both of them, I'd say Star Wars Fall, uh, Jedi Fallen Order as my as my favorite. If you had to make me say a favorite, um, and then most anticipated is going to be Breath of the Wild if it was actually going to come out. If it's not, uh, it's going to be Final Fantasy VII. So. That's yeah. my summary. I can hear you now. I don't know what happened. I think my I think Hangouts just froze because my mic was unmuted. It may have, may have. We'll see. There was an alarm that went off in my kid's bedroom. Yeah, so. it's fine. <laughs> and no, we didn't know, we don't know where the alarm came from either. So. <laughs> oh wow. Well, I'm I'm glad everything checked out. Uh, and yeah, I, I got to cover for it, so I think it was all right. You could yeah. hear me the whole time, couldn't you? I could. That's cool. That's cool. Got to love technology there. I, I need do. to. I just need to pair my AirPods to my to my PC for this be so much yeah. easier i use yeah the only thing is when i went out of range and tried to re or it reconnected to my phone so I ah, it back again. yep yep i've got that problem every time my for some reason my when my wife uh is driving near me if i'm mm -hmm. in my car and i get near her car uh my phone's like oh i'm gonna pair with her car now like yeah. if i'm driving like following her or anything anyways you didn't hear come here to talk about uh airpods and cars and everything you, you can't talk have. about gaming maybe maybe yeah, so you went through all your stuff. Hopefully uh, you didn't miss my awesome color commentary, but <laughs> there was uh, some great games on the list, and hopefully you guys like my great games as well. So as far as 2019 goes, um, my shout-outs. Yeah, shout-out. quick rundown. Apex Legends, 
yeah. for sure. Um, a BR game that honestly I'm not very good at, uh, and I honestly don't even play that much of, but I actually watch a lot of it on Twitch just because I it's one of those games I live vicariously through because I suck at them so bad. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed it. It was kind of like an Overwatchy BR type game. Um, had heroes and everything, and has its own like kind of flair to it. Um, and this was done by uh, by uh, why am I freezing on the uh, respawn yeah uh, who did two games uh, who released two games in a year which is pretty amazing um so shout outs to respawn as well because they made my list uh twice mm -hmm. uh later uh next one outer wilds this is a game that i did not finish um but it's really cool uh it was an indie game that often gets confused with the outer worlds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh obviously because ow ow like it's very close but it's a very different game um it's a puzzle game where you are trying to unravel why the uh like why the solar system is kind of ending um the reason i couldn't beat it is just i couldn't see very well i think that there was some color issues with my eyes where like I just would I, I figured out what I was supposed to be doing but I wasn't mm -hmm. able to accomplish it and the game is on a timer uh, and so I just didn't finish it but I still really love the concept it was really cool uh, Little Town Heroes yeah another game I did not finish but it's the first game that was made by Game Freak not named Pokemon um, has a really unique battle system and the fact that there's no leveling up or anything like that there's like these uh, cards and you kind of they call them ideas uh, as they're floating behind this guy and uh, you pick what idea you come up with to fight. It has, so really cool battle system, but the game was so fetch questy that I just ultimately didn't like finishing it. But every battle I got in, every time I got to a new battle, I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And then I would have to do another fetch quest and not so. But still fun for what it was. If, it, uh, if it's on sale, I definitely recommend checking it out. And then last shout out would be the great br the br that we didn't know that we needed <laughs> in tetris 99 um it's exactly what it sounds like it's a tetris br where you're up against 98 other players you play tetris and you can attack people by by closing lines they can attack you combos all that good stuff the there's music they added new they added like uh backgrounds and panels i got the legend of zelda panel and that's kind of where i left it because uh, it made like uh, Legend of Zelda tre Tetris music, um, but yeah. awesome, awesome game. So shout outs uh, to those games. Um, as you mentioned, your game that you didn't uh, that did not come out this year because uh, I just thought it was fun. I uh, said that I was going to play this uh, when my son was born, and I don't want to be a liar, so I played Persona Five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, while I had the little the little minion who's now a big chunker. Uh, <laughs> He would wake up every two hours and then go to sleep for about an hour. So I would fit in an hour or I would be holding him and I would play it. So it took me, uh, I, I cheated a little bit. I looked up some things online to kind of optimize some things because I just, I didn't have time uh, to really think about it. But I really enjoyed uh, the story, the battle uh, the turn-based battle system is fantastic. So I beat it in 80 hours. If you were playing it a little bit less illegitimately, you would mm -hmm. probably take like 90 or 100 to, to kind of maximize. Some That's things. a hefty game. It That's is hefty. hefty. And now it's on sale regularly. So you can get it for as low as 10 bucks. Um, I think even you might even still be able to get it now for 10 bucks. Uh, definitely worth that. I spent 14 on it. I got my money's worth. Um, I'm glad that I played it. I had never played through a Persona before. It really makes me wish that they released Persona 4 Golden on PS4. Um, they probably never will. So we're probably just going to wait for Persona 6 because I'm not going to buy Persona 5 Royal. But it, that's another game where if you are now interested in this turn-based, very classic JRPG, you can either have the choice of getting Persona 5 for super cheap or Persona 5 Royal for uh, probably the full 60. And it, it comes with uh, an extra storyline and, and more okay. missions. Um, but... I enjoyed it quite a bit. I'm glad that I'm glad that I went through it. So, yeah. 
for my 2019 games this isn't really in a particular order because like you i don't have like a game of the year i have these are just my favorite games of the yeah year. i didn't have anything that stood out uh where i was like but there were a lot of games that stood out just not i i, f I feel like this year is going to be one of those years where there's like a clear like that that final fantasy 7 or that last of us 2 or zelda if it comes out like but this this year was still solid a lot of people were saying it's a down year i don't think it was a down year it was a solid year yeah you had some um, interesting choices here by the way you have some very yeah. interesting yeah so we're gonna start with katana zero uh i played this on the switch i think it might be out on ps4 now but it, i believe it initially launched on switch uh by devolver um, our, one of my favorite uh, publishers these days publish a lot of smaller titles, so this game was only fourteen ninety nine when I bought it. Uh, you play as a ninja assassin, uh, and you go through the levels. And a couple things: you can only get hit one time. If you get one, if you get hit, you die. But you rewind, and you get to kind of see how you uh, you get to rewind back to the stage. It's not like there's lives or anything like that. You just kind of keep going back, and you keep doing it until you you win and then it's cool when you win in your brain and in the game you're going really fast and you're doing all this cool stuff and then whenever you win it actually will go through a thing where it's like watching security camera footage mm -hmm. and kind of show you how you took down the entire stage oh um, that's cool which is really cool it's a nice has recap, a, yeah yeah and it has a nice little story to it uh the the assassin's a little crazy um there's like some drug that uh he's addicted to that uh they give him every time he completes a mission and it kind of keeps him going and you know it's one of those like controlling situations so you could probably figure out the figure out the rest um but it's really cool i really enjoyed it i played it way earlier this year definitely recommend it um great side scrolling action game fantastic it's like you can deflect bullets there's things where you can like slow slow down time a little bit and and jump around uh it was fun and and challenging enough to where i didn't get angry but there's uh it's not like easy you're not just gonna flow through it yeah um next one is another small little title this one you've probably seen on the internet <laughs> um because it rolled around and that's untitled goose game took the internet by storm man as this soon game as... <laughs> is so charming even uh even the detroit tigers the other day on twitter posted a, a video where every they posted their errors and for those of you who don't know an error it's where like a baseball player on the team makes a mistake like that affects the play uh -huh. and they posted a video of their errors and right before the error would happen the goose would come on and honk <laughs> 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 to make it seem like he was causing the errors you play as this little goose that terrorizes this little village uh, it's amazing. for a while. You know, and <laughs> it's so... Did you end up playing through it? I, no, I haven't played all of it. I played oh, okay. a little bit of it. It's but I need so to play great. The I, pl I played through it with my wife, and that was uh, it ended up being one of her favorite games of the year to just kind of watch me play and figure out. It has puzzles, because uh, you have like a list of things that you want to do, but also you can kind of just do whatever you want. You can literally pick up like almost everything in the game, and then you could just bug all these people and steal all their stuff, and it's it's great. Uh, yeah. I had so much fun with it. Um, it's a great game also if you have kids. Uh, there's nothing, like, violent or anything about it. It's so goofy that uh, you'll you'll have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, and it's accurate. <laughs> it's accurate because these, these guys, man... They're, I'm afraid of geese. They are I'm legit afraid of geese. I was trying to I was trying to be uh, PG over here. They are mean. They are really mean. I was attacked by one when I was like ten or eleven, uh, for no reason. Like just hanging out on a farm, and he just looked at me and was like, "It's on," <laughs> and just ran after me. <laughs> so yeah, uh, they're terrifying. They're crazy. So don't me don't mess with the goose. Um, and what was funny is that it was made. Just a little tidbit. Mm -hmm. I think it was made uh by aussies and they don't have geese there and oh, so wow. they just kind of i don't know you know i don't know what inspired them to to do this but it's, you know it's it worked on. out great well i yeah, guess if it, I, yeah i mean i guess if we can make games about kangaroos and stuff then i guess yeah. they can make games about geese <laughs> yeah you're free to do whatever you want australia yeah. i give you permission um but highly highly recommend it especially mm -hmm. if you have kids or if you just want to play something that is fun with with your with your pa uh your spouse or your partner or whatever you'd like to call them um and again i think it's only 14.99 so super cheap um 
and then we go back to RPG land with <laughs> that my favorite RPG of the year and I played a lot of RPGs this year the JRPG is back my friends uh, with Fire Emblem Three Houses uh, so this isn't full on this isn't like the JRPG you're thinking of like Persona 5 this is a tactical JRPG but I'm, just, I'm still lumping it under that same thing I love this game it is so so good the characters are awesome you can literally recruit like everybody and everybody has like a little bit of their own story that goes into it the the twist the that happens in the game is awesome and there's actually like three branching paths to the game they all kind of revolve around the same story but they play different where the bosses end up being different and they have some different scenarios um later on in the game um it's very meaty uh this is a game that's only on switch by the way but it's it's worth the full price of admission it took me uh i think 75 hours to beat this game and there's it could have probably taken me longer but I have a kid, so it's kind of like I just wanted to play through the next mission. I could have done more side stuff before I ended um, and probably recruited some more. But the, the characters are so good. They're all voice acted, uh, except for you. That's the only thing that bothers me is I hate silent protagonists these days when they when everybody else talks. Um, but I'm, you're just this awesome warrior uh, that kind of like a warrior light type thing where you come in and you kind of save the day and you have these powers and... There's so many good characters. Um, I loved it. I loved it so, so much. Uh, so if you are, have been having a tactical RPG itch, I definitely recommend this game. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you... Did you ever get it? Uh, I didn't get that one. I want yeah. to get it, though. Um, yeah. It's it's on my... I should probably pick that up list. Um, yeah. Robert in the comments was saying, is the Goose game free on PlayStation this month? I don't see... I don't think so. Yeah, it looks like uh, we've got Uncharted... Uh, we have that's, Goat Simulator. That's, that's Goat Simulator. January. Yeah. January? Yeah. That's January's. This month's was uh, Titanfall. Titanfall. And yeah. uh, it's it's January now. Else. It's January now though. Well, yeah, the free games haven't come out yet, so yeah, you can still correct. you can still pick up Titanfall and Monster Energy Supercross. Yeah. And the Nathan Drake Collection and Goat yeah. Simulator are going to be the ones on there. Both good in their own rights. Very different, but both are very good. Yeah, so, gooses, goats, yeah. you know, same thing. Same thing, same right? thing. You got, so you got one more on your uh, on your list. Uh, I have two more. On my we have list two more of top five. Oh, you do. Uh, you do. Another RPG, because this was the year of the <laughs> RPG. But we're going American this time, and that's the Outer Worlds, baby. This is Fallout in space. Uh, it's made by the people who did Fallout New Vegas, um, Obsidian. I'm really actually super upset with obsidian for getting bought out by xbox because that means that outer worlds 2 will mm -hmm. not be on the playstation uh so if i want to play it i'll have to probably buy the series x or whatever the lowest version of the series x is whenever that comes out um it's fallout there's not much to say about it. it's fallout in space the uh it has some great voice acting um it's also not as meaty. Maybe you want it to be meaty, but I actually kind of liked it. It was uh, a little over 30 hours for me okay. on this game. You can make it longer. I, there's definitely some side quests that I didn't do. I tried to do most of them, but they're like I didn't realize on a couple of the planets like what they could imply, uh, and I just kind of moved on. Um, and one of the one of the planet settings was not especially interesting, so I was just like, eh, and. Uh, moved on and didn't finish those side quests but mm. they're all pretty much optional you can kind of go through the story you get to be uh evil or good or somewhere in between uh i chose virtually the good path um the uh so it, it kind of affected my ending a little mm. bit um not in a bad way but just in a different way that i wasn't expecting um but a lot of fun uh it's already on sale so i definitely if you like fallout and you like space get it i picked uh, this one up i picked that up for uh black friday by the way yeah still haven't played it well you still haven't played it i got time though not really because there's a bunch of games coming out in like march <laughs> so you should get on that probably should uh and then lastly but certainly not leastly if you guys knew we're star wars fans mm -hmm. uh and i'm pretty sure this was on patrick's list as well yep um star wars jedi fallen order is dope 
uh, especially if you like the soul style combat, which I do not particularly care for. Uh, but since I had a lightsaber, I went with it. <laughs> um, I also turned it down to narrative mode just because I got whooped a few too many times. And it's again, one of those things where it's like, I want to experience the story and the story is, is really good. I, at first, when I, at the beginning of the game, I thought it was going to be really bland and they really turned it around, um, as the game went on. Uh, and so much so my wife even got me a BD one, uh, like a 3d printed BD one droid to put Aww. together. I haven't put it together yet, but I will certainly show it off to the stream. Whenever it's done, it has to be like painted and, and stuff. Cause no BD one figures existed, but it's full size. It's full scale. You can't oh, see me right cool. now, but I'm holding my hands up to my, my, my chest. It's, it's full size. That's cool. There it is. There it is. Uh, That's cool. it's about this big when it's done. So uh, it'll be cool, but BD1's awesome. Um, the character, while he could have used a little bit more depth, it had a really cool spin to the Order 66. Like, how many times can they rehash um, that kind of in-between? They did a good job. Uh, especially liked the ending. The ending is great. Yes. Um, so if you are a Star Wars fan, you probably have already picked it up. But if you like the Souls combat and you're maybe not Star Wars, you still might, you, you still might have some fun, and you'll probably actually own it but like you and when i say own it i mean you'll beat the crap out of it because it's not as hard as like a souls game but you can turn it up to to uh the max setting that's the thing that i like about it as compared to souls games is that souls games don't have uh difficulty settings mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. one does so that, you can turn that up and down as you like that was one of my favorite things because i, I there was literally a um what was it? it was not when the surge came out i can't remember which which game it was that came out actually it may it was uh when um what's it called came out the game that i rage quit sekiro when sekiro came out yeah uh, all these people were like this game needs an easy mode and there were people like jim sterling and others who were like you can't put an easy mode on a souls game it'll ruin the integrity of a souls game and then star wars comes out and it's like hey uh, this is the this is what everybody wants. It's it's both, um, and I there are hardcore people who got who who got into uh, Star Wars. I would say that the bosses aren't as complex, uh, and I agree on that. But you know what? There's more story in this that you can understand yeah. as opposed to having to read item descriptions. So I appreciate it. It was a nice sweet spot in my it opinion. Was, it was one of those things where as opposed to um, what's the, Control, where yeah. that, was, that was a complaint about Control, there's way too many items to pick up and read. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish there was more audio logs. Star Wars has a I think just the right amount of stuff mm -hmm. that you can read that or it was Star Wars, so I liked it, and I knew that a lot better. <laughs> so it could be a little bit of that too. But um, I'm not gonna go just be, just for time, and since I was kind of away, I don't want to rehash some of the anticipated games that he already mentioned. Um, I could talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake all day. I could talk about you, Last of Us Two all day. You could do your shoutouts because uh, I didn't have those on there. Yeah, so I will shout out some uh, anticipated games, and I have two other anticipated games, but mm -hmm. let's start with this month with DBZ Kakarot. Um, for those who, who know this story, from what I can tell, it's the mm -hmm. same story we already know. It's kind of uh, that early on in Goku's uh, time... Um, I don't know the story as well as some people, so there's probably so like yeah. if if my friend Elijah was here right now, he'd be he, he'd be yelling at me. Yep. Um, I don't know the story as well, and plus I I've never played any of like the single player DBZ games, mm -hmm. and so as long as it reviews decently, I'll be ready to play it. Um, and it's gonna start. I think it'll start 2020 off nice mm -hmm. with with a good action game. Like who doesn't love being a Saiyan? Um, yeah. The the combat looks insane. I want to know how the combat flows, yeah. um, and that's why I'm really waiting for reviews. Because like the what Patrick's showing right now for those who are watching, like a lot of it was like that. That's the combat. Like mm -hmm. this video right here isn't, but like there was one where you're you're flying in the air and the dude's like hundreds of feet away, and <laughs> and it looks like you're gonna fight that person somehow. So I, I want to know how how well that flows. Um, and then uh, another tactical game because I just Final Fantasy, dude, make Final Fantasy <laughs> Tactics. Like, bring I don't care, port it. Do I it don't up. care. Yeah. Remake it, remaster it, whatever. We but will buy some tactics. Gears of War Tactics is yeah. a dope concept. 
dope dope concept the game the game looked great you mm -hmm. know the, i think they're showing too many videos because i'm like i know what gears looks like guys like it's yeah. okay but look like look at this it looks so good i um, i love i love the switching between the perspectives because you yeah. can it still keeps the integrity of the of the of the creature even when you're going back into the isometric and then when you go up to like a close-up or like a more cinematic view it doesn't yeah. look like we've we've come to to bridge the gap where our <laughs> we're no longer in uh, playstation one era where there was a complete difference in in uh in the uh, cinematic versus the the game. Yeah. And here you what it looks like multiple gameplay types, even though it's it's all tactical. But the camera view changes and it's still consistent. And people who don't understand that the the subtlety in there uh, are really young because that is amazing to accomplish that in in video games. You kids, yeah, you, you damn don't kids. appreciate things. <laughs> uh, the fact that they boasted about the, the campaign length. Um, the 40 plus hour campaign like i don't know if it's something you should necessarily brag about because gears of war is definitely a short style game but like this is an this is, if they do it right this is a gears rpg so that means it's got to be leveling up that means you're either leveling up your guns or your guys are getting stronger somehow but uh the only problem i have with it is that it comes in april and i'm not gonna get to it in april i just really want to play it at some point this year yeah uh and then the last shout out would be ghost of tsushima yeah, which I know I talked about a little bit before, but man, this game, this game hits hits levels of things that I I didn't I didn't think I didn't know that I wanted, but I totally want it. I really feel like it's gonna go I under the radar without going mm -hmm. under the radar because it's a Sony first party studio. It's Sucker Punch. Mm -hmm. um, for those who don't know, those are the people who made Infamous, uh, and Infamous is a great superhero game, so this is a little bit different. Um, it's third person, which mm -hmm. Sony continues to do over and over again. And for those reasons, I feel like since it's coming out after Last of Us, and this is this is probably like the swan song of the PS4, mm -hmm. you know, I'm really hoping it's good. That's kind of why I put it on the shout out and not on the anticipated. I'm hoping the combat is solid. I'm hoping that you kind of switch between like a samurai and there's like some other instances where it looks like you may go into like a ninja type mode. So like, is it like a samurai slash ninja guy, which are two totally different skill sets? Um, I'm really, really curious yeah. which direction this game goes, but the video that they did at the Game Awards looked sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm excited, but still a little cautious and wondering if it's going to hold up to all these other games that I'm yeah. excited about. <laughs> this this part here by the way it looks like it could be very difficult in the timing but man yeah. it uh i mean you're gonna feel pretty pretty amazing uh taking people <laughs> down like this i mean it, to, this whole this whole scene reminded me of a, of a western like a clint eastwood style western and then you got the uh you know additional characters obviously the uh, i'm not gonna spoil anything here i don't know if this has if this is going to how much of this is going to be in the actual game but the the story and the like uh changing of i'm trying not to so i'm trying to articulate this and having not seen it in a while and not spoil the things that i know but uh the twists of the story maybe may or may not be betrayals involved and and that kind of thing is going to be really interesting different motivations of characters uh, is going to be really interesting. Like I said, uh, when I was talking about this, um, this is much more realistic in comparison to some of the other games that we've been getting that are ninja-like or samurai-like. So uh, I dig it. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to shout out those. You already mentioned Final Fantasy VII. We started with it. I don't want to go too much over it again. You went over Last of Us as well. Yeah. Uh, those are two games that kind of speak for themselves. I, I will... I, I originally put this list in no order, but mm -hmm. after seeing the intro uh, to <laughs> Seven Leak, that is now mm -hmm. definitely my most anticipated. Like, March can not get here soon. I'm already considering buying a second copy of the game because I bought it physically for the Steelbook, uh, and I don't know if I can wait because I didn't buy for, like, express shipping because Square Enix's express shipping is stupid expensive. Oh. Um, so I'm considering buying it digitally just because... I don't, I don't know what to do. I mean, it I guess you so can wait. Good. I guess you can wait and see if it, if like what, how their tracking is going to be. If you can wait like two days, how, how, I mean, how late do you think they're going to, you're going to actually get it? I don't know. It's square. You know, like they don't care. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not money. Amazon. It's true. It's not yeah. Amazon. I ordered mine. I have the collector's edition coming uh, through yeah. through Square. It's the only way you could get it. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I expect it to probably be a week late, uh, yeah. which is going to suck. But I I can't do I that. Can't I can't do it. <laughs> so there's a, there's a strong chance I buy the digital and just just I don't care. I'll just have the steel book on my shelf. It's whatever. Yeah. Um and The Last of Us 2 again stands on its own. That's Naughty Dog. We'll get there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, two games that I don't think you know you mentioned, and I forgot to look at your list. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get either any of these three. Um, okay. Cool. I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk about why later on. But cool. So uh, one is actually already out this year, but for those who don't know, I'm not a PC gamer, so it's Disco Elysium. Um, I honestly am trying to learn as little about this game as possible, but I've heard that the writing and the storytelling of this game is off the hook. Um, I've heard so many, I've heard nothing but good things. I've not heard a bad thing about this game. This game did so good that it kind of uh, stole some indie spotlight at the Game Awards. Everybody was like, what's Disco Elysium? And that's kind of, it's a PC only game right now, but it's coming to console in 2020, which is when I'll be playing it. But uh, from what I know, you can pick like two or three or four different character types, and that affects your like stats. Um, like, there's like a guy who talks really well, and you know, I, again, I'm trying to learn as little about it as possible. I'm just going completely off other people's hype yeah. with this game. Um, but it's a it's a narrative like detective game where I, I don't know what mystery or anything that you're uncovering, but you're going through this and. Um, getting to make uh, choices uh, and so on that affect different things. And I think that there's multiple ways that you can do certain things. Like I think um, one that stands out, people talk about like trying to get into this club and the bouncer doesn't want to let you in. And there's several different ways to talk to the bouncer and convince him like, hey, you know, let you, you know, to let me in. And I love choice style games. I love those. Like, I don't feel like it's like a walking simulator, but who knows? Um, so again, I'm, I'm trying to learn a little about it as possible. If you have a, a, if you're a PC gamer, go check it out for me and let me know what you think. Um, but I'm super excited about it just from hype. Yeah, this got on a lot of people's lists, by the way. Yeah. As I was looking through other people to see what other people were thinking, um, and I was I was surprised. I was like, I didn't know about it. So good stuff. Yeah. Uh, and now Breath of the Waifu. Uh, that's not actually what it's called. So <laughs> this game kind of just appeared. Uh -huh. um, we talked about it uh, because it appeared, I think, at a either a Chinese or a Korean um, game show last year. But you can clearly see from the video where like the texture is undeniably like ripping off Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. Even some of the enemy creatures there look a lot like Moblicans. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of where it's, uh, that's not where it stops. The music is also, you can't hear it. We can't play that. But it, go go watch a trailer and you'll also hear very Breath of the Wild music. Yeah. Um, and it, there's one track that almost sounds beat for beat the same. <laughs> uh, like I said, maybe they so changed good, the key. Though. Yeah, so in terms of this game, though, the combat looks amazing. Um, the characters, probably a little over-sexualized, but that's the that's the, the, the JRPG way. Um, they actually, if you want to look on their website, there's a Genshin Impact website. They actually have a full anime, uh, not anime, uh, manga, uh, online manga available for free that kind of you can read and learn about this world. And I've, I've started it. Uh, it's pretty interesting, um, but it's going to be an action RPG, I think, as opposed to, to Zelda, which is just straight action. Um, but as soon as I saw this, I had to play. Like this, it looks too much like Zelda uh, to not want this game. <laughs> yeah, it, this is this is one that I didn't want to support, but at the same time, I'm like it. I want to support instantly. It's 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 stealing, but it's stealing from the best. So yeah. Yeah, I may I may have to buy it too. <laughs> if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. That's true. Um, That's true. It's not going to beat the best, but yeah. again, it's it, again the gameplay is different enough. I I'm trying. I signed up to hopefully try and get into a beta, but we'll see. If I probably signed up way too late, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to it though, especially if I don't get any Breath of the Wild two this year. At least I can have something that looks like Breath of the Wild two. <laughs> <laughs> When does uh, that come out, by the way? When does it come out? Do you know? Uh, I can Google it. I don't know if they've actually said. Now it just says 2020. Uh, yeah, 2020. So we don't know. 
Um, as soon as I know, I will let people know because I'm, yeah. again, super excited about this game. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I thought it was kind of an obvious choice, but you said you didn't include it on your list. Uh, that's Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. I'm... It looks it looks fun, but at the same time, sorry, it looks good. I'm okay. curious. I'm curious when it comes because I love. Okay, don't get me wrong. I love CD Projekt Red and everything, but The Witcher, playing The Witcher, even The Witcher Three, it's not as smooth and integral. Uh, or sorry, uh, as so what's what's the term I'm looking for? Um, crap, I'm I'm forgetting the the term. Uh, anyways, it's. The gameplay is not as uh, immersive as I would have liked, okay. uh, and the pacing of their games can be a little too like drawn out in regards to uh, in regards to the, um, teaching and the tutorials. Um, sometimes there's a, just way too much um, mini missions that you have to do, kind of like Metal Gear Solid Five, which I guess I also like. So I guess I can really complain. Where it's like, all right, you got to do these four or five missions before you get further in the story. Um, also just tons of like different stats to try to figure out what is the best, you know, best, uh, item to use or what this is, how this is actually going to heal you. Uh, so needlessly complex and so on. I don't know if this is going to fall into those traps, but I'm, I'm mm. cautious. I am cautious. That's why it's not on here. Mm. And also because I know I'd have to invest a good 70 or 80 hours into this game. <laughs> so the reason why it is on my list is that I honestly don't care for The Witcher very much, and I know that some people are going to hate that. I appreciate The Witcher. Sure. I I respect The Witcher, but I've uh, come to realize in the last uh, uh, couple of years that I really like fantasy books. Mm -hmm. I don't really like fantasy games that much. Like, and I and I mean specifically like the setting of of The Witcher, where like horses and and swords and uh i know that there's a little magic and stuff in there too but it's just there's something about it that i just don't i don't know it just doesn't click with me like i want to love it because i know that the writing in witcher 3 is so good i know that the depth of the quest lines is so good like i've i've talked to some people where they're like there is no side quest there's just story like <laughs> they and there's obviously a main quest line, but literally everywhere you look in Witcher 3 is story. And that's the other thing that's a little hard for me is that it's really dense fantasy. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if there was a little bit more of a through line, like just go here, point A, point B, maybe a little bit off to the side here and there, I would probably enjoy The Witcher a lot more. But Cyberpunk, if it's like Witcher in a future-y setting... Mm -hmm. I think that'll be right up my alley. I think that's something where I appreciate sci-fi. I appreciate tech. I appreciate um, this weird... Uh, what's the movie? Blade Runner. It, it, Blade Run. Run. it very yeah. much reminds me of Blade Runner, um, which is dope. Blade mm -hmm. Runner is awesome. And so uh, playing, playing through a Blade Runner-esque game uh, as an RPG, the only part that bothered me is that I don't like that it's first person. I wish that it was a third person game uh mm -hmm. only because you spend uh i don't know how much time designing your character but the second that you tell me that i can't look at my character i care a whole lot less about what my character looks like you can't tap it into into third person like skyrim does that like skyrim looks like it's all first person but you can change the third person mode i mean we watched that there's like a 45 40 minute, minute gameplay yeah. yeah and i don't remember you ever i think you can see yourself in the mirror and there might be some cutscenes or something um, where maybe you see your character, I don't really remember now yeah. at this point. But no, it's not. It's not first or third. It's a first. Gotcha. It's a first person it's game. Just first, okay. Uh, that's that's the only thing I don't really care for it on the premise. Um, but I'm also the other reason why it's an anticipated thing is I'm anticipating the scope. I want I want it like they they taught they they touted that it's a living city in terms of the game like from when you boot into the game the city is alive and doing stuff regardless of whether you're doing anything or not the yeah. city is doing things um so i'm really curious about how far that that can be taken and i'm really curious where you know those like videos that you see on youtube where like the the game is broken like they yeah. break the game on purpose to see what else is going on in the game while you're doing things i want to see that because i want to see if people like it like 
I think it would be super interesting if I was capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. I would do it on our show here, where like, like if you could break the game and then just like pick a character and follow them around, like yeah. for a day or whatever their time cycle is. But yeah, the scope is super interesting, and I think that it's gonna push the PS4 to the max. Uh, the Xbox One X could probably handle it a lot better, and those are times where I wish that could do it. And it could just be one of those things where it ends up being like, hey, maybe. Uh, if you are not in on on the PS4 or or you have maybe the the regular PS4, maybe you wait for the PS5 because it's probably going to run a whole lot better on PS5. Yeah, yeah because it will run on PS5. So I'm happy absolutely about that. backwards I mean, compatible, baby. Thing. But yeah, uh, I will say CD Projekt Red did say they don't know when they're going to um, port it. I guess because so we know for a fact PS5 and Series X are both backwards compatible, but that doesn't mean that it's a optimized type game it's like for example uh grand theft auto 5 came out on 360 ps3 before right before ps4 and uh xbox one came out that's they they optimized it and they made it better they took they used the specs of the the newer console to make grand theft auto 5 run better yeah. so cd project red doesn't know when they're going to do that but regardless from what we've seen as far as like spider-man goes where spider-man loaded in a second on their ps5 like if that's happening <laughs> with a game like cyberpunk because i bet cyberpunk on a ps4 probably takes five or ten minutes to like load that world <laughs> man that's that's gonna be crazy also you're talking about like the the um uh mode and story that these other characters have and the npcs having their day-to-day -day in their living city um, will be really interesting because like when Grand Theft Auto actually even before that um, Morrowind was one of the first uh, yeah. games where they're like all the NPCs have like things that they're doing and like the game would break like uh, dep when they were in the early stages and then when they got it to work you had you could follow a character around and you'd see him leave his leave his house during the day and he would always go to the different like specific uh, you know places and stops and stuff so it's really interesting to see that many characters and what all they're going to put into it. Um, I'll, I really hope that they're going to do like a demo so I can try it out and kind of just get my hands dirty with it because I think that's what I need. Um, it looks great though, and I love Blade Runner and I love everything else. It's like I just I haven't been 100% sold in it because I know it's going to be something I'm going to put in 80 hours, 80 plus hours. Um, yeah. One Final Fantasy VII demo, like right now. Yeah, right now. Come on, it's it's we're like two months away. Come on, we can do this. Just give it to me. <laughs> I promise. I'll be yeah. nice to it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't need a Last of Us demo. Just give me the game. Yeah. Oh no, I don't. I do not want a demo because that's, that's going to get gonna a single playthrough. That's going to make me <laughs> angry because when I played Ground Zeroes, that's how I felt. Metal Gear Ground Zeroes because I played yeah. it. It's like one level. It yeah. took like an hour and a half, and I'm like, okay, I've got way too many questions now. Um, <laughs> Actually, sorry, it took like three hours because I because it's Metal Gear and you have to really carefully strategize everything. Yeah. Anyways, um, so that's it for for twenty nineteen, baby. Yeah, and moving into twenty twenty. So we're uh, I think it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a really good year for gaming. It's going to be also a year with two console launches. So that'll be fun. Mm, just for just for where we're at, I already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have nine games that I just want to buy. Yeah. in 2020 and that's that's just a start that's just that's just like i there's good there's stuff that hasn't even been announced yet that's yeah. gonna like blow us away and hey nintendo you want a breath of the wild 2 just you know there's there's two consoles launching just 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 a little breath of the wild 2 if you want if you want to say like hey screw you ps5 <laughs> screw you series x <laughs> do breath of the wild 2 i, I don't care yeah, bring it out on the same day. I will. I will not buy PS5 on launch day to play Breath of the Wild too. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be hilarious if like they're like here's Breath of like they they have like the PlayStation launch and the Xbox launch and they have they're gonna have to have a launch title. You have to have a launch title. You got to have that sexy new app, right? Yeah. And for that to be go to go on, and then Nintendo's like. Breath of the Wild 2 comes out the same day. And then and then you see like the stats for like oh what's the top selling game? Breath of the Wild 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be it'd be Breath of the Wild and then like Halo Infinite. Like it's gonna like I'm sorry, Halo. Like as good as you look, number two. Like yeah. just you just slap just Breath of the Wild just 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 Breath of the Wild too. Just make yeah. just make this the year of dreams. Final Fantasy VII remake and Breath of the Wild two and Last of Us two. Yeah. So on the on the hierarchy, this is, this is my question though. 
Uh, so PlayStation, we only have one. We only know about one PlayStation Five um, exclusive, right? I don't know if I'm assuming it's going to be a launch game. So that's Godfall, right? Yeah. So you have Godfall, Breath of the Wild, and then uh, Halo. Um, I'm I'm putting them in Breath of the Wild. And then I don't know if Godfall or Halo. Like Halo could outsell it just because it's Halo. But yeah. oh, it's which game? Outsell. Which game do you think will actually be better to play though? Do you think Halo. it's going to be okay? I think that I don't think. I, don't know. I mean, are you talking about thing? Are you talking about versus Breath the, of the Wild two also? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, Breath, okay, okay. I, so just just <laughs> Halo. Just Echelon. Halo and uh, um, and Godfall. No, ha- Halo, absolutely. Microsoft knows they can't mess this up. You can't yeah. like you 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 messed around. You you came out with that crap that was ODST. Mm-hmm. You came out with uh, what was it? Which what was the other average one? Like there was Reach that was good. Yeah. Uh, I, four was not good. I don't remember uh, now. Was it five? Whichever whichever one where they're like they they. It seemed like you were going to be Master Chief, and then he's like hardly in the game, whichever one that was. Because I, okay. that's where I got to send. I didn't like ODST, and then that made it even worse. So yeah. Uh, so Halo for sure. I think Microsoft knows if they don't nail Halo, they're screwed. Yeah. Um, especially now, based on that spec video, which if you want to check it out, it's on Facebook.com/slash The Land Cave, where yeah. they're talking about the Series X um, potential specs that have leaked versus the PS5 specs that have leaked. Like there's also a chance the PS5 is cheaper than the Series X. Um, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna say it right now. I think the PS5 launch is cheaper than than whatever the Xbox comes out with. And if PlayStation manages to launch their console first, which they haven't said they will, but if they launch five, a hundred dollars less than the Series X, like Halo better be great. Yeah. If it's it, not great, you are screwed. If if PlayStation launches early and for less it's that's going to be for the first at least year if not year and a half playstation will be on top with horizon zero dawn 2 uh-huh do that if they do that as the launch now i know halo definitely carries more weight that's sure. obvious everybody knows that halo's been around forever they modernized the uh console fps for sure mm-hmm. it's not even a contest other than call of duty but like they brought it um but horizon zero dawn 2 on PS5 for a hundred dollars less. Yeah, like it would be. It, it's it gonna would be, be insane. It's gonna be a good year. Oh, if we're gonna do have it, fun this man, year, dude. Sony. If you can do it, you got to do it. Uh, and you know, you should is... tune in to Facebook.com/slash Land Cave because we're gonna be talking about it all year. We will be. And uh, I, I, I wanted to do it last year. I, I'll. We always recap E3 and everything, but we're. Yeah. I, I would like to do, um, like even more that week but anyways there's a lot we're gonna be talking about a lot of star wars we're gonna talk about uh and other things we're gonna review uh so if you don't like games but you just want to hang out and talk about nerdy stuff we'll talk about nerdy stuff too like the witcher and everything uh have you watched the witcher series by the way uh, i've watched my wife watch it okay all right well i don't care for it we may we may may talk may not talk about that though we may talk about other you things, can talk but... about it i'll listen i will <laughs> give my i'll give my outside i fell asleep during it twice that happened. All right. Um, I don't think it's boring. I just I think there's a lot of lore that I don't get, and that I'm just I think Henry Cavill's killing it. There's a lot of lore a lot of people don't get because it's like Polish myth mythos, and it's yeah. stuff that like we're not we're used to like the Arthurian legends and and or Tolkien style. So then you get this, and people are like, ah, I'm not following what's going on. So, anyways, um, that's it for the show uh, this week. Uh, tune in next week and every other week that you live for the Land Cave, and we'll see you later. Okay. Bye.